This is a vintage or antique porcelain pull chain lamp. It's kind of an Art Deco style with a green avocado base and a milk glass shade. Got a little bit of damage here to the shade and the base has a crack here. But other than that, it's, it's used, but it's definitely serviceable. This piece here is by Mo Bridge Company and it dates to probably around 1929. It had a patent number, which I write in here, which I looked up. And this piece here came on a tray lot at an auction and I just had my eye on it. I knew nobody else would want it. I think I got the tray probably for five, maybe 10 bucks. Had a bunch of other stuff on it as well, but this was kind of the piece I was after. I put this piece up for $65 and I did not do a best offer on it. I figured this is a kind of a rare and unique piece and people are always looking for replacement fixtures that are period authentic. And it sold for full price. It's been up for about three months or so. Another house of miniatures dollhouse furniture kit sold. This one here sold for 10 bucks. So I sold one of these about two weeks ago, and this is the second one that sold. And I hadn't, so I got these quite a while ago, and I didn't have much faith after I kind of researched them that I would actually make my money back. But having sold two, maybe they're just a very seasonal piece, so maybe I will sell through all the inventory I have on these. Anyhow, 10 bucks. This is a Kemper hand painted kind of open salt cellar. That at least what I believe it is, that you'd put salt in these and put them on the table. It's marked on the bottom. Camp Paris. This is a French ceramic. And this I got at an auction. It was the last lot of the night. It was a tray lot. It was the last lot. So I know I get, didn't get it for much because nobody was there. I can't remember what I paid for it. It was probably five to ten bucks. Wasn't the only thing on the plate or on the tray. And this piece here I put up for $70 or best offer. It's been up for probably 10 or 11 months now. And somebody just came in and bought it full price, 70 bucks. This is a pair of primitive style kind of cast iron spiral candlesticks or candlestick holders. These are not authentic or old. But they're made to look in a kind of a farmhouse, farm table style. And in fact, they actually are marked, I believe, one of them was marked Mexico on the stem. <clears throat> Here it is. Very, very subtly. I don't know if we can get that to focus. So one of them is marked Mexico. So these are not, you know, 19th century pieces by any means, but they're nice pieces and they look great. And I got these in a tray lot of other cast iron stuff like this or metal, metal stuff. Didn't pay much for it, probably 10 bucks. And these I put up for 50, best offer, and somebody came in and paid full price, $50. If you've been watching my videos, you might recognize these, because I did sell them before. And this is in fact the same set. These are hammered brass measuring cups with a little wrought iron handmade holder. And these did sell before and the person never paid for them. So I kind of preemptively made the video expecting that the person would pay because they had good feedback, but they never paid, they never contacted me. And so I had to open up an unpaid item case and then relist them. It happens sometimes. And yeah, these went back up. I put them up for, I think it was $65 and I took a best offer on these of 45. And I got these in a tray lot, probably 15 or 20 dollars for the tray lot there was a bunch of other things and there's some interesting pieces in that tray lot so it was a bit i paid a little bit more for it and these i was actually going to keep for myself and then decided they're a little bit too much for my kitchen i just thought they're a little bit too uh ostentatious i guess this is a vintage revereware colonial solid copper kettle and it's basically new old stock it's never been used i did open it was an open box package, but this was still sealed, and I actually just opened it in order to take the photo. It's a beautiful copper kettle, made by Revereware, so it's a nice quality piece. Comes in the box, and I put this up for, I think it was 70, 70 or 80 bucks. This I got at a walk-around auction. It was just under the table at this one walk-around auction I go to pretty frequently, and it was a bunch of copperware, and I think I probably paid 10 bucks at most for it. And so I had this up for 70 or $75 and I took a best offer of 60 bucks for it. Didn't show it very well, so I'm gonna just show this a little bit better. This is the kettle, the base. It's got the top here. 
and a nice wood handle and metal bale. And there's the box. So a nice piece, a nice sail. This is an antique Victorian mermaid cast iron hanging hook for a chain lamp. So those kind of Victorian lamps that have chains that in a pulley system that allow them to kind of move up and down and they're usually kerosene and they're just beautiful pieces and this is just a really exquisite hanging hook. Pretty rare piece. There's reproductions of these made out of brass selling on eBay for about $75 or so. So I thought I might be able to get more for this. So I put it up for $300 just to see what would come around and I just got a lot of low offers. $25, $50, $60 and I told myself I would take the first offer of around 100 bucks that came in and so somebody offered me exactly 100 bucks and I took their offer wish I got more for it it's a really neat piece and this I got at an auction and I actually got it with a Victorian hang chain lamp hanging lamp a beautiful piece with a milk glass shade I have yet to list it it's kind of a challenging piece I got to put it together I got to hang it and make it look nice and I just haven't gotten around to it so at some point that piece will go up I think I paid about $40 for it and so I've already made my money back just selling this. Once I get that other lamp up I'm, I'm hoping I'll get about $250 to $300 for it. So these are two lots of clock hands. Each of these bags is full of just salvaged clock hands. This bag here has 125 clock hands in it and this one here has 130 plus clock hands in it. And these I got at a walk around auction. It was just kind of a junky box full of clock hands. It was a little cigar box full of these clock hands. I knew that somebody would want something like this. So I broke them up into two lots and I listed them separately and I had them up for I think it was $69 for each lot or best offer. And somebody made me an offer of $55 for each lot. So both of these lots went for $110 and they're going off to Australia. This pair of Ferragamos came from the same walk-around auction as the clock hands. It might have actually been the same night that I purchased both of these. And there were two pairs there and I think I got them for around $10 or $15 for both pairs. The other pair was a black leather pair which is a bit more popular and sought after and that one there sold for $140. This one here is kind of in the pewter design. They're in pretty good shape. A little minor wear to them. And these ones here I put up for $100 originally but never saw any action or traction on that price. I lowered them down to 60 Still didn't see much. Finally someone made me an offer of 40 but then they didn't pay. And it's been about a week and I finally opened an unpaid item case after contacting them a couple times to pay for them. And they finally did pay. So these are finally going to go off into the mail today and I hope that they don't come back. I don't really know too much about this pin other than it was marked 14 karat on the back and I did a test on it and it is solid. I don't have a precious metal scale so I best I could determine was it was roughly 4 grams. My scale is kind of accurate. It, my scale is kind of accurate to about 2 grams. So, uh, you know, give or take a couple grams, who knows. But anyways, I did I did uh Listed up on eBay. I put it up for 110. I did not do best offer. I usually don't do best offer on precious metal stuff. And somebody sent me a message saying they would love it for their grandfather as a gift. He's been a lifetime realtor and would I take 90 for it? And I said, sorry, I couldn't go quite that low. And I sent them an offer through the eBay make an offer thing and I sent an offer of 100 bucks for it, which he gladly accepted. And this came in a lot of jewelry that I purchased, just kind of costume jewelry. I didn't pay a lot for it, but this piece was just kind of hidden in there. Nobody really saw it, so it was kind of the little gem at the bottom of the box being a solid 14 karat gold piece. So pretty good sale right there. This is a pair of Museum of Fine Art gold tone Nautilus clip-on earrings, just some costume jewelry. These just came in one of the various costume jewelry, vintage jewelry lots that I pick up from time to time at auction. Probably paid twenty to thirty dollars. Big, huge box of jewelry, and these here sold for fifteen dollars. And these are marked. I find when I first thing I look for when I go through jewelry after gold and diamonds, of course, is anything that is marked and try to figure out what that mark is. So these had a mark which 
designated as the Museum of Fine Arts. So just a little tip if you're selling jewelry is always try to identify the mark or the designer or the maker and put that in the listing.